When I think about the relationship I have with my five children, they often give me insights into my relationship with God the Father. Of course, the parallel is not perfect, but there are some lessons to be learned. One of the insights my children have given me is that there's sort of three reasons why they listen to me. Three, three reasons why they obey. And these three reasons seem to correlate why we will listen to God and obey Him. So let's check them out. Number one, for fear of punishment. Sometimes my children listen to me purely because they know that if they don't, they're going to lose a privilege that might be a treat, a toy, some freedom. They might end up in the corner. And if we really want to get them motivated, we just threaten the loss of screen time and this transforms them from a sinner to a saint. <laughs> Is that good? No, it's a starting point. It teaches children that there are consequences to actions. And let me tell you, if kids don't learn that when they're young, they're going to learn that from the world and the world isn't going to be nearly as nice as mom and dad. And sometimes we obey God for a similar reason. We are, we are afraid of the negative consequence. And I think the most obvious one is hell, eternal loss of God. We obey his commandments and all his laws simply because we don't want to get punished. We don't want eternal loss. We don't want to go to hell. Now, is that a good thing? Yeah, it's a good thing not to want to go to hell, but it's not the mature thing when it comes to our relationship with Christ. And so hopefully by God's grace, we move beyond it. Just like we hope that children move beyond uh, fear of punishment when it comes to obeying parents. Another reason we obey God, for a reward. Now sometimes my kids listen to me not out of fear of loss, but because they're motivated by a possible gain. Pick up your toys and you get to watch a movie tonight. Clean up your room first and then we'll be able to go to the park. Good actions get good results. You get a reward. And this is an important lesson in life. In general, people are rewarded for virtue. For example, I guarantee you a person who has grown in the virtue of affability will have better quality friendships than a person who hasn't grown in this virtue. Or a person who has acquired the virtue of fortitude will be much more at peace when adversity comes than one who hasn't acquired this virtue. So there's a reward. Sometimes we obey God for similar reasons. We want the benefits that go along from being faithful to Him. So for example, we might read in scripture about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. The fruits of the Spirit evidence that the Holy Spirit is alive in our life. They, they bloom as we are faithful to Christ. Now we might look at these fruits and think, hey, I want that. <laughs> I want this alive in my life. So what do we do? We be faithful to Christ and we can expect the fruits of the Spirit to grow. So that might be our motivation to obeying God. Or the most obvious one is we obey God because we want heaven. We want eternal happiness. Now, is that a, a good reason to obey God? I think it's a good reason, but it's, it's not the best reason. But it's better than the first reason. I think St. Francis de Sales said, love obeying more than fear disobeying. The third reason to obey God, out of love. There has been occasions when our children have done something extraordinarily charitable. Not because they were fearful of a punishment, not because they were looking for a reward, but simply because they wanted to do something kind. And when that happens, I rejoice. And I must always remind myself they have likely learned that quality from their mom. <laughs> And this is where I want to get to with my relationship with God. To love Him and obey Him, not obey Him not because of a reward, not because of fear of punishment, but simply because I want to love Him for His sake. This is what the saints strive to do. And Saint John of the Cross said, in the evening of life, we will be judged on love alone. It is imperfect love to obey God out of fear of punishment. It is imperfect love to obey God for a reward. But to love God for His sake and His sake alone is what we are designed for. And this is when we become fully alive. Fully alive. I'm not there yet. But by God's grace, may it please Him to get me there. What about you? My name is Ken Yuzinski from CatholicSpeaker.com. Thanks for watching.